Typically, the rest or nitrates should relieve the chest pain within 30 seconds to 5 minutes. If short-acting nitrates like nitroglycerin is not able to relieve the chest pain, it's unlikely to be a chronic stable angina. So probably you're dealing with an ACS, so rush to the hospital. Even before learning the differences between a chronic stable angina versus an unstable angina, it is very, very important to understand the fact that unstable angina terminology has now become completely clinical. Uh, which means, you know, like classic unstable angina, the theory is what is going to confuse the students. What you will be thinking right now after the previous uh, discussion I have made. So unstable angina is something in between a myocardial infection and a chronic stable angina, which has an unstable plaque with a ruptured plaque and a thrombus formation. But the flow limitation caused by the thrombus and obstruction is not significant enough to cause a infarct so that the biomarkers will be normal. Classic definition of unstable angina in pathology textbooks. But remember, that has created a tremendous confusion because we need some terminology to differentiate and tell that the chest pain is not due to chronic stable angina and the chest pain is not a benign chest pain. So that terminology we chose is the unstable angina terminology which means it's completely clinical as of now. So that is why many guidelines do not use the term unstable angina right now in the ACS. Currently they split the ACS into two, either an ST segment elevation ACS or a non-ST segment elevation ACS, they no longer use the term unstable angina because it creates a huge confusion because the term has now become completely clinical. So what you really mean by unstable angina? Any chest pain that is unlikely to be a chronic stable angina or unlikely to be a benign chest pain which has a high risk of being an acute coronary syndrome is called as an unstable angina. That's all. Which means it's a high risk chest pain. That's all. So it's completely clinical. You, you now forget the old things that we have learned. Okay, that's only for pathological point of view. So let us start our discussion with the chronic stable angina. So chronic stable angina means the patient should have a chronic chest pain. We know that. So what do you mean by the definition of the word chronic here? So which means the patient should have a history of chest pain at least for two months or more. If the pain is there for less than two months, it's a new onset chest pain. So that chest pain could evolve into anything. For example, it could evolve into a chronic stable angina over time if it's a stable plaque or sometimes a new onset chest pain if it's for less than two months, it can be unstable also which can further evolve into a other forms of acute coronary syndrome. So you cannot really predict if the chest pain is less than two months. Classically, only if the chest pain is more than two months, you can call it as a chronic stable angina from that uh, perspective. On the other hand, the patient's pain in the setting of a chronic stable angina will be completely predictable. So which means the patient will have a fixed obstruction, fixed flow limitation, and it will be a predictable pain. In the sense like if I am the patient who is suffering from a chronic stable angina, I will be knowing exactly when I will be getting the pain. For example, a patient might be getting pain if they climb beyond two flights of stairs or they walk beyond three blocks in the road. So what I will be doing, so I will be stopping just before that uh, climbing two flights of stairs and I'll take rest for some time. Then I'll be moving. So I know exactly at what point I'll get pain, my threshold is, and I'll stop there and I will take rest for some time and I'll, I mean, uh, start working after that. So this is something extremely predictable. And at the same time, the chest pain, even if it happens, it will be for less than 10 to 20 minutes. It will not be more than that. It's a short duration of chest pain. And apart from that, this chest pain will be exacerbated, we know, by exertion and it can be relieved with rest and nitrates. Exertion means it's not only a physical exertion, it can be a mental exertion in the form of emotions as well. Typically the rest or nitrates should relieve the chest pain within 30 seconds to 5 minutes. If short-acting nitrates like nitroglycerin is not able to relieve the chest pain, it's unlikely to be a chronic stable angina. So probably you're dealing with an ACS, so rush to the hospital. So we have seen three uh, important features. So one is going to be the chronic chest pain, exacerbated by exertion and emotions and relieved by rest. So out of these three features, if you have all three out of three, we are going to call it as a typical angina. If only two out of three is there, we are going to call it as an atypical angina or atypical chest pain. If none of these features or only one of these three features is there, then we'll be typically calling it as a non-cardiac chest pain. 
subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from Preplada.